Well, hello, cousins. It's old Rusty here, and this is the Rusty the Reseller channel where we talk about buying and selling stuff. <clears throat> and you know what? Today's video is going to be chock full of some cool stuff. We got all kinds of stuff to show you and talk about today. Jewelry, postcards, tools, hats, I mean, lots of different things that you can probably find yourself locally for good deals and sell for a profit. And that's what this is about. It's finding treasures, having a good time, not taking yourself too seriously, and maybe making a buck or two. Let's get into this today. I think you might be excited by what you see. We have a delightful amount of things to go over and discuss today, and I don't have any particular order necessarily, but let's get into some jewelry first, and I'm just going to show you uh, stuff that I, I have come across and purchased locally over the last two days at local thrift stores. Um, <clears throat> I frequent a lot of the same places. In fact, yesterday I was standing in line to go into one, and a, and a lady approached me and said, well, hey, Rusty. Now, I'd never met this woman before, uh, but she was just uh, very kind and nice, had some nice things to say about the channel, I guess, has has seen our stuff and uh, and said she just enjoyed uh, watching it. And so if you are seeing this now, thanks so much for approaching me. I, I love to uh, meet other people who are interested in the same stuff and, uh, you know... Um, I like to learn from other people and stuff, and that's kind of what this is. I'm hoping that some of the stuff we share with you can help you and I. And then at times, uh, I would love it if and when people make comments and say, hey, Rusty, that's this thing, or whatever that helps me. Uh, it builds my knowledge base, and it helps me uh, to, to know how to list things. But I want to show you some stuff that <clears throat> I came across. Uh, we'll start with this necklace right here. As you can see, it's this beautiful blue kind of speckled beads here it's got a lot of things going on it's a multi-strand necklace as you can see it's got some sort of speckled um i think these are basically like ceramic type beads they may be glass um and these other little plastic beads in between with some kind of rhinestone uh rings here as well but the reason i bought it aside from the fact that it's fairly attractive and I can tell it's vintage, is that um, here where it it, uh, it has the, the type of uh, attachment here is you've got this loop, which uh, or this, uh, not loop, but you've got this uh, string portion here with other beads, uh, and this is made so that when you attach it, it has different lengths depending on the, the length that you want it to hang down or your neck size. Um, and so if I kind of um, un, uh, you know detach this here, You'll see that this portion here where it hooks on, uh, sometimes they're just hooks and sometimes they have a little piece. This is uh, made to look like a flower. Um, and on the back, you can see the hook right here is attached and it has a brand name on it. If you look at the back and you look real close, it's upside down here, but it says Vendome, V-E-N-D-O-M-E. -E, and I don't know if that's the right pronunciation or not, but it phonetically looks like that. Um, and this is a vintage <clears throat> costume brand. And I found this exact, I just, uh, you know, I took a photo of it. I use, you can both use uh, something called Google Lens, but also there's the same type of feature um, on eBay where you can just click on um, up by the search uh, bar. You can click on the little uh, uh, camera icon and you can snap a photo of it and you can search if there's anything within eBay that looks like it. And I, you know, it's hit or miss. Sometimes it doesn't work. But in this case, I found that one exactly like this had sold recently for $129. Okay. Uh, and I paid $20 uh, for this. So I spent up on it. But I only did that because I knew that one had sold and I could make 10 times, uh, not 10, 10 times, but at least five times my pro, uh, uh, my cost on it. And it was in good condition, okay? <clears throat> then next, uh, I found this. This was behind the glass case. Uh, I didn't know what the brand was or anything, but when you find partial sets or parures, they call them, I think it's a French word, which means a partial set. This looked to be a potentially a complete set. Necklace, bracelet, earrings. There's no brooch, but I don't know if a brooch came with it originally or not. Um, 
I, I looked at the front of it. I looked at the back of it. What you're looking at here are these little um, plastic, uh, you know, stones made to look like turquoise with this little motif on it. Looking at it over in the back, you know, it's hooked fairly well together. And then what we want to do, of course, is look uh, at the back. We want to look at the back here, both on the top of the clip and on the underside. You want to look at the back of the clasp for the bracelet, and you want to look at the hook on the necklace, either on the inside of it or on the back to see if there's any brand names. And in this case, if you zoom in, oh, I not if you can oh, be able to get it or not. There is the name <clears throat> on the inside of the hook. I think you'll be able to see it better. In this case, every single one was marked. And you can see this one here says Trifari. And it has a little crown above the T, which means it's a crown trafari. And crown trafari is uh, what things were marked as earlier on in the, the, the history of the company. And they are uh, highly collectible. Not every single one, of course. But crown trafari, uh, Alfred Felipe, I think was the designer or, or the main person uh, maybe uh, um, associated with that company in the beginning. But this is a beautiful little set. Again, I've seen one like this sell for over $100, and I paid $20 for this as well at the exact same place. And then these four sets of earrings you're going to see here also I bought at the same place. Now, they're starting to do their research, folks. This is uh, happening. Uh, people are getting smarter and wiser. You know, I'm, I and you are not the only ones who are learning and, and, and making adjustments uh, over time. The people who run these stores, the workers, uh, they're, they're wising up to the fact that some of this costume jewelry is collectible. Some of these boutique names uh, can carry big values. And, um, and so each one of these pairs... Uh, I paid between ten and twelve dollars for, it. and usually I can find this stuff at places for like two or three dollars. I still can, but this particular place was up. I still bought these though, and I'll explain why. So these two pair, this one right here, what you're looking at are these kind of uh, beads. It, it's a it's a wire type construction. You can see it, it, the wire is attached. You've got these kind of coil looking pieces of metal and then a wire that goes up through these kind of uh, oddly shaped uh, plastic beads with uh, Aurora Borealis rhinestones all around. It's a very interesting and complex uh, constructed piece. And you flip it over on the back and you're going to see a brand called Hobe or Obey. I'm not sure again, the pronunciation here. And I'm not the best at pronouncing stuff. If you follow the channel, uh, don't say, well, no, it's called Obey. That's what Rusty said. Well, don't, don't do that because, uh, you might make an idiot out of yourself. Uh, I, what I'm just, all I'm saying is, Brand names that have these letters in it that look like this, they can carry some good values. And that's what you need to remember. When you see this, there are ear and pairs by this brand that sell for hundreds, over $100, bracelets and necklaces that can be, bring even more value than that. And then here's another pair. This is, this is kind of an orange color with these little bead type stones in here. Same thing, same brand. I paid twelve dollars a piece for them. I could sell them individually or in a pair, but you got to be careful with some of these folks. You can see that just pulling it out. Uh, when I got back to the warehouse, one of these little stones fell out, so I got to glue it back in. These vintage pieces, folks, can be quite fragile, and so you want to be delicate when you're when you're working with them. Moving over to this side over here, you'll see these beautiful, uh, uh, I would say like a tri-tone color blue uh, earring pair. And by, by that, I mean you got this kind of deeper, almost like a, a deep sapphire blue color rhinestones on the top. You've got sort of a medium, almost like a, a blue topaz color, a medium topaz color there. And then lighter stones down here that resemble more like the color of an aquamarine. These are not those stones. These are all rhinestones, of course. But then you flip it over and you you look on the back. There's no maker mark there. And you, you pop uh, the little clip up here. And then you can see what I'm now looking at is the construction of this piece. It's nicely made, but you see puddling of the solder uh, uh, between these different uh, round settings. And this right here is called puddling, puddling uh, between the two. And if you were to just kind of draw out around this, it would almost look like a figure eight. 
Now, the fact that there's a figure eight puddle in here, and then as I continue to rotate this around, which is made more like a three-dimensional piece here, you'll see this little wire coming up from the side and wrap it around up so that it's holding a piece uh, that's connected up on the top of this piece. The wire construction and the puddle on the back uh, to me indicates that this is likely or could be uh, a brand called Juliana that was uh, was a model, I guess, uh, of a series of jewelry made by uh, Deliza and Elzer, uh, I believe is the brand name, uh, that is a very highly collectible boutique brand. Their ear and pairs can also sell for dozens of dollars into the hundreds. And when you have complete sets, earrings, brooches, or, or bracelets, uh, necklaces, they can sell for over $1,000. Just look up Juliana Jewelry in eBay, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And then over here as well, we've got a very colorful. I love the color uh, contrast here between this sort of uh, bright ruby, this bright red and this sort of a, um, almost like a, a citrine, a darker, or like a smoky topaz kind of color. Not not those stones, but just the color of those stones. Those are rhinestones, of course. And then again, the back, no marks, but you do have puddling in the back. This also is very possibly um, a, 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 a Juliana piece, but it could also be some other pieces like maybe Shriner or Kramer of New York or something like that. But I think that they're boutique. Uh, I, I think that I'm going to make some good money since I only spent 10 to $12 on these. People uh, really do collect this type of costume jewelry, and it would make sense for you to uh, do your research, maybe even get some of the books that are out there that talk about how to identify identify some of these boutique makers. Here's another pair I bought. These I bought for $3 at another thrift store. You can see large rhinestones on the bottom with this kind of swoop in motif over the top rhinestones. But when I flip this over, I will see, even though it's not the best mark, the W is a little faint. This is a Weiss brand, a Weiss brand of earrings. And I'm not going to get as high of dollar for these because they are clear rhinestones. People tend to pay up more for more colorful, exotic, bright colored uh, pieces of costume jewelry than the clear. But there's still a market out here. And if this, say, went to a set and someone out there has the bracelet and the necklace, but they need the earrings, then they might want to get these to complete their set. If you have a full set, you're likely going to be able to fetch a much higher value having a complete set than just having uh, one or two pieces out of the set. Next up here are some rings that I found. I found these uh, both back-to-back <clears throat> -back days at the same store, but not on the same day, all right? Um, this one right here, <clears throat> if you look close at it, see if I can zoom in, it has, um, it's almost like a cameo here, folks. It's got like a, a person, um, kind of like a, a almost like a um, an old Greek or Roman type, um, you know, figure on some sort of green uh, background here. And you're looking at it, you're thinking, well, what, what is that? That's not a rhinestone. That's not a gemstone. What is that? Well, <clears throat> this is, uh, it's actually made of some sort of a ceramic. Okay. And, uh, and I don't exactly know how they apply this white portion on the top of it, but if you look around, it's kind of like a, a, a silver color. And uh, when I got it and I held it and I looked at it, it, it was marked as sterling silver and they were selling it for $20. I looked over in the back, and I zoomed in uh, with my eyes. I'm zooming in with camera, of course, here. It says Wedgwood Made in England. And so this, uh, if you're not familiar, Wedgwood is, uh, is a company that makes a variety of, of types of uh, pieces that look like this, everything from, from uh, plates and bowls and cups and saucers and, and uh, sculptures and vases and things. And I didn't even know that they made rings, but they do. They make rings. Um, and it's something about the look of it and, and holding it in my hand, it just did not feel like silver to me. I just did not, it did not seem like it was silver. I zoomed in uh, on the bottom here uh, with a, with a loop 
And uh, there were some markings that says JW. I believe that J the W is for Wedgwood, and it has several marks here. I did a scratch test, and I discovered that this is actually not sterling silver. It is actually 10 karat white gold, which is awesome because $20, and this was, uh, you know, uh, about three and a half grams. Now, definitely some of that weight is the ceramic portion itself, but uh, a lot of that is the gold weight. So for $20, I've seen the ones, uh, the last one that sold just like this, uh, it was actually blue, not green, but it was the 10 karat white gold sold for $179 on eBay. So that was a good purchase for 20. And then this right here, um, is a beautiful little ring. It's a, it, it's made to look like just sort of a flower. It's got these clear, uh, rhinestones, which, uh, are, are cubic zirconia, right? They, I was hoping they were diamonds, but they aren't. I, I, I was hopeful, hopeful. Uh, I did not expect that they would be because this is a 10 karat gold, yellow gold ring. And with 10 karat, these stones being the size they are, and there being seven of them total, I thought, well, probably wouldn't be diamonds that many that size diamonds on just 10 karat gold and I was right it's not it's they are not diamonds but they are cubic zirconia and it's 10 karat yellow gold ring so I spin up for this uh but I believe I'm still going to make some good money uh, I, I spent $50, and I think that I can sell this for somewhere between $120 and $150. It, it might take a little bit, but gold jewelry, folks, always sells. It always sells. It's just a matter of how long you're willing to wait to get that ideal price. But it's a, it's a beautiful ring. It's a size 6, which is a, a you know, fairly common size for women. So it's a good size. It is an attractive piece. You could wear it for a variety of occasions. So I think uh, I won't have any problem in selling it. The last uh, few jewelry items here in this segment that I wanted to highlight and talk about are just these things I put together. None of these are terribly value, uh, valuable in and of themselves. However, I just wanted to show you kind of what I have and why I, and talk about why I bought it. So uh, this was sitting there with probably four or five other, uh, I would say like you pr pr probably call them bar uh, pins or bar shaped brooches. This is, looks like you could, uh, you could say not, or you could say pretzel, <laughs> uh, shape here. <clears throat> Something like this. I'm always looking to see if there are any kind of hallmarks that indicate gold or at least a maker mark. And so in this case, I've actually never seen one that's marked in this spot before for this brand, but right here by my thumbnail, uh, if you zoom, if I were to zoom in here, yep, right there again, it says, it has a crown over the T. It's a Crown Trafari brand. So I paid $3 for this, but this is going to be more like a $20 to $24 brooch. This one here is a lovely little uh, brooch of just a bird, all right, in flat. And the look of this is was similar uh, to other pieces I have come across in the past, which is actually made of sterling silver or silver underneath, but it has a layer, like a plating of gold over it. So that gold, that really bright gold color, it is gold color because it is gold. Now, it's not a, a enough that really people are buying it for the gold. It just gives it more of an attractive look, but it it is made of silver. I looked all over. There are no marks anywhere on it. It's fairly light. As you can see, it's kind of thin. It was cl uh, clearly just poured into a mold, you know, and made. But it's an attractive piece. People who collect bird uh, jewelry might like this. Someone who just wants something that has silver or gold. This is what they would call vermeil, which is like a gold plating over uh, something like silver. Uh, and so again, $3. I, I think I can easily get $20 out of that. This was a nice, attractive piece. There are pieces like this that are made of gold with diamonds. And uh, I, when I actually didn't have my loop with me when I was in the store, it was only $3. And so I thought to myself, uh, whatever this ends up being, I can get more than $3 for it. Let me, let me pull this up. I'm on the wrong side. I couldn't see with, with the naked eye what exactly this said because it kind of ran together. But when I got the loop back at the warehouse, I noticed you can see there it says Roman. Roman is a, it's a fairly well-known or a costume jewelry brand. And these are just uh, clear stones, probably glass. But it's an attractive piece. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm sure it's used, but it, you can't hardly tell. And that's sweet. It's kind of like a, what they call a tennis bracelet. It clasps in, uh, it, it snaps in that way, and then these little hinges on either side come, and they clip on to a little, a little nub there to hold them together. So for $3, again, $15, $20. Um, and then this, <clears throat> it's pearls. 
one indication that it may be authentic right off the bat is that it does have individual knots tied in between them. Any kind of uh, real pearls should have that because people who make uh, the jewelry out of pearls know that you don't want the pearls rubbing against each other because it causes them to degrade. I mean, pearls are essentially um, a, a substance that has formed around a, a piece of uh, a piece of shell or a piece of a rock or something that got inside. Uh, of the shell and and it, it builds up uh, the the oyster or whatever um, or the the client or whatever it is that made it you know secretes this substance that kind of protects against whatever that irritant is inside there and that's how pearl uh, pearls uh, they're gorgeous uh, they 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 are developed they can be developed naturally they can be developed synthetically or, or, or uh, I say synthetically. Uh, a person can intentionally insert something into the the animal in order to get it to create these. They can come uh, fairly round. They can come uh, oddly shaped. Uh, when you see pieces and the shapes are roughly the same size, but if you look really close, you can tell that they aren't exactly the same size. That's a good indication that they could be genuine. Um, and so in this case, these are genuine pearls. They're not in the greatest condition. They degrade over time. Even if you keep terribly good care of pearls there is a shelf life for how long that they're going to last and really look look their best but the other indication that this was probably made of something uh, authentic was this clasp that is heavily tarnished right here this is like a claw clasp right there on the little piece that uh that detracts in if you were wanting to open or close this, that little piece really close there has a tiny, tiny stamp. This is 925. And even on the side here, faintly, it says uh, 925 on it. So it's a sterling silver clasp. And it's, it's, a, it's just a, this is not a, a super valuable pair of pearls, folks. These are probably South Sea pearls. These are probably um, man uh, made in the sense that they were not, uh, you know, naturally found, uh, in this shape. They're smaller, but, um, uh, for a $3 purchase, I could probably get $40 for these. And so, uh, to, to spend, uh, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen dollars $15 for these four pieces, I'm going to get, you know, over a hundred dollars, uh, for, you know, 15 bucks. And the last piece here, of course, is an old lady's watch. I buy these all the time for two, three dollars, yard sales, thrift stores. I don't know if this little owl kind of charm that's on here was originally a part of this or if it was put on afterwards. I kind of think it probably came on later by somebody, but this particular brand is a Wittenauer. You're gonna find uh you're gonna find all kinds of different brands. Their common ones I find are uh Bulova, uh, Bulova Elgin, Gruen, Wittenauer, like this one. Um and uh, and the and the list goes on. There's there's a lot of them. Uh, this particular one is gold tone. So what I want to do is I want to flip it over. I want to look at the back of plate here, and on the top it will say one. Uh, you know, or ten. It, this one says ten karat gold filled. So there is gold filling in the bezel here. Sometimes they'll say one twentieth twelve uh, k GF or rolled gold RGF or RGP rolled gold plate. And then this doesn't have, this is the a type of band that just stretches, but sometimes they have ones that clasp in the bottom. And on the clasp on the bottom, they'll oftentimes tell you if they have gold content also. And sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll find ones that say 10 karat gold or, or uh, 14 karat solid gold. That'd be a great score for $3 because those can sell for really good money. You always want to check to see if these are automatic uh, or if they ha are battery powered. Uh, sometimes people will sell them saying, well, the battery died or it doesn't work. But what they don't realize is that that particular uh, watch doesn't actually take a battery. It's what they call an automatic, which means you have to pop out the crown and crank it in order to wind it up. You set the time, you wind it up, and then it will keep time for a day or two. And that's, uh, I mean, there are still watches and pocket watches, 100, 200, 300 years old that still operate with really good time when you wind them up. And so uh, ones that are uh, operational at work, those ones can sell for more money because uh, they actually are functional as well as having gold content or just being a collector's item. Real quick, folks, I just wanted to... Stop for two seconds and remind you, we have more than one YouTube channel. We have a channel called What Sold, which is like this channel, but it's really to just show you specifically on eBay, our store or stores, what we have sold. We tell you what we paid for it. 
where we got it, how much it cost, and how long it took to sell it to give you more concrete, specific information. It's called What Sold. We're real proud of it. And we have some others. We have High Spirits. That's about doing stuff outdoors. We have Sound Machine. Have you ever tried to go to sleep and you think, man, I, I wish I had a, a sound machine to play some music in the background or a fan or something? Well, look no further. Go to our channel. You can turn it on overnight and then get that precious shut-eye that you need. And there are others. Just look in the description of our videos. There are links to those. Please check it out. But wait until after you get done with this one. Here, folks, we have a stack of vintage postcards. And uh, I'm selling all of these in a lot. There's about 80 in here. And these are ones that um, I had up in smaller lots or individually that just haven't sold. Um, and so, I'm, again, I'm trying to move product, right? So sometimes I wrap these things up in um, various bundles, okay, of like items, and I try to sell. Um, what you're looking at here is a standard type of what they call a real picture postcard. And this is a scene of World War uh, One of the Navy. Okay, some men. And I think that this is such a cool shot, honestly, because it's such a candid um, I think, I say it's candid, I think that people knew generally, I think they were working and then someone said, hey, everyone look over here. And then he snapped a shot. You've got, you know, some guys in the background here, some are looking away, some are looking at something next to the mast there. You got one dude right here just puffing away on a cigarette, a couple other guys tuning in to the shot. And then in the foreground, I just love it. This dude stepped into it, uh, wasn't ready. Um, it's just a bunch of young men uh, out there uh, serving their country, not really knowing what they're in for. Um, it's just a it's just a look into the past, folks. Um, real picture postcards are postcards that um, have a real photograph. They're made of with photographic paper, and you'll see the shimmer uh, kind of here on the, on, on that. If you, if you turn it, you'll kind of see that this is different than just something that's printed with a uh, normal die. Okay. And then you've got these wide, a wide border, about as wide as my thumb on one side and the smaller on the other. They didn't exactly center the photograph on the paper when they made it. And then you can see here that this had to have been, uh, around, you know, 1917, or after, most likely, uh, because it is divided. But then if you look at another one here, same thing, even wider side, and look at these rascals just getting together, little photo on a fake horse in front of fake teepees, and it's just a, a bunch of white gentlemen with must mustachioed uh, uh, friends here, I guess. I don't know why. Why are they together? Why is this the backdrop? I don't really know, folks. Again... Uh, interesting to see what people were up to, what they were doing. Here's another one. This time we're out by a river. We got some large, looks like cane pole, fishing poles. And look, this youngster here, look how proud he is. He's so proud that he's sticking his tongue out at you and he's holding this fish. You got it. Look at the, the dad behind there. Mom and dad. Dad's holding a rifle. Okay. And then you got, uh, you got a couple of fishing poles. It's a scene uh, it's really interesting. Here's one from a, a lot that I bought a long time ago. I've got several others like it, some better examples. I'm keeping for a collection to sell later on. Still a real photo, but this is, uh, it says this is, um, this is the initiation of landlubbers crossing the equator on board the U.S. Delo USS Delaware while cruising on his royal domain bound for Valparaiso, Chile, okay? And it's Chile, C-H-I-L-I-E, even though that's not how you spell Chile. Uh, but by Neptunus Rex and his trusty shellbacks. So, um... Those of you who are more knowledgeable in this, I would love for you to get on and give a history of this in a, in a comment or give us some context. But there are ceremonies that the Navy has been performing for years, and this is back uh, likely uh, in the teens, if not the very early 1920s. 
um, where when they're crossing either the prime meridian or the equator and they come back across, they'll call them, uh, they have different names for that. Shellbacks is, 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 is one of them, I believe. And, uh, and it says the ruler, ruler of the rage and main and solemn mysteries of the sea, maybe something like that. And you, it gives you the longitude and the latitude. You know exactly where these fellers were when they took this photograph and you can see a bunch there. They've, it's a whole, it's a festival on this ship. They're dressed up. Um, look at these, these gentlemen. They've got, they've got, they painted their faces. They got these headdresses. They're looking just bizarre, but how much, how fun that they could do this. It's a camaraderie thing. It's a, it's a respect thing. It's a, um, it's a brotherhood thing. And, uh, I think it's just so cool that someone decided to take a camera on board and photograph that. Um, here's some more, some cute little girls, some twins with twin baby dolls, porcelain, hand-painted porcelain faced and head baby dolls. Here's a youngster with some, some, uh, some, uh, little bows laced in her hair and her little teddy bear, uh, in her arms and her little night, get her little nighty. And the list goes on, folks. There's some really cool shots. Here's a double shot, same picture. One's, uh, a little bit more exposed than the other. And this one says, winter foliage with some sort of like uh, artwork over here on the side. Someone's proud of their tree with the snow. And I have three of them. Isn't that crazy? I don't think I've ever come across three of the same real picture postcard before. Um, they did them in very small batches, folks, maybe 20 at a time, 10 at a time. So to have three of them still is pretty awesome. This was a demonstration here of a fire department spraying a hose of water. And you can see there's flags up. I don't know where this is located at. Most likely the landscape looks different now anyways. It would be very difficult to tell, but that's cool. Here is the same scene from, uh, same thing happening from a different uh, uh, spot. You got the flag, these people are together and you can see right here, look at this fireman with his fire hat spraying that hose up in the air and look at the hose behind him. Such a stinking cool looking shot. Um, and then here's a girl. I don't know if this is what they call a mourning picture. If this, if this youngster had passed away, unfortunately, or if it was just a parent who was like, look at my little angel just sleeping here. I'm going to get a little shot of her and, and just look at the, um, I'm just struck honestly by, uh, yes, the clothing and it's a cute scene, but like, Look at the 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 comforter on this the the style the design. Look at the wallpaper in the back. Look at all the things hanging up in the background. Um, here's an over over the head view of Paris. Real picture postcard. I'm sure Paris doesn't look exactly like this today, but that's cool. It's the Eiffel Tower uh, is in there someplace. Let's see if we can find it. Where is it, Rusty? Where is that Eiffel Tower at? Is it is it in this uh, the park area? You'd think that maybe it would be, or is it off down another spot down here? I'm having a hard time finding it. Frankly, maybe it's there in the background. Did you see it? I don't see it, folks. Maybe I'm blind. I need to get out here and get my magnifying glass glass out here to see if I can find that sucker. But I, I, last I checked, the Eiffel Tower was in Paris. So that, that, that matches up, um, with, with what I, I know to be, at least I thought to be true. Um, here's a bunch of youngsters out here with some sort of thing that says, uh, what does it say? Bo broad view something. Look at these kiddos faces. Back in the day, man, so cool. Uh, here's a kiddo. He's got his. Uh, he's got his. Uh, you know, he's got his little uh, snowball there. Don't uh, don't make faces at him. He might get you. Uh, and then we got. I'm just gonna do a couple more of these, folks. A band, again, circa World War One, um, and it looks like perhaps the French. Uh, I don't believe that those are U.S. uniforms. And then this goes really well uh, with what I showed you. Uh, or maybe I, I'm going to show you. I can't remember where I'm fitting this section into the video, but look at that gentleman there. And uh, I think there's another one here someplace. Some guy. Oh, there he is. Do you see him? He's in the woods. But they're cutting all these down, folks, and they're using these gigantic 
Look at his hand saw he's got in his hand. He's got it. Uh, he's cutting these, these puppies down. They're logging. Um, and that's what we have over here. Uh, I brought in today some really large saw blades. Um, and, you know, these pictures go on, folks. If you don't know about picture postcards or postcards, and not all of these are real pictures. Here's one that's made to look like a real picture postcard, but they've, uh, uh, they've uh, manipulated it. And this is in 1909, folks, they were doing this. It looks like cattle and everything, and then they're like, whoa, look at this. Look at the corn that we're harvesting. Look how huge the corn is. It's it's twice the size of the barn. And we're up on here. We're just trying to we're just trying to harvest. It's a bigger crop than normal. The land of big corn. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, and so kind of going along with this, folks, right here. Look at this. One of the other things that's uh, collectible about postcards is the, the actual uh, who wrote it, the way that the writing looks, the message itself. People collect postcards because they can sometimes have rare stamps. Sometimes they have rare cancellations, which is what goes over the stamp to show that the postage has been paid and has been redeemed. This one's in Des, Mo Des Moines, Iowa, so the land of big corn, Iowa, December 15th of 1910. Um, sometimes the manufacturers of the postcards are collectible to some people. And this particular one is the North American Postcard Company out of Kansas City. And uh, it's cool, folks. These are what they call, um, oh, what do they call these? Um, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the term for it. Help me out here uh, where they manipulate it and they make it look, make things look bigger or smaller than normal. Um, it's, it's, a, it's made to be humorous, of course, uh, and not realistic, but anyhow, folks, I'm getting into these. I got several I'm going to try to put into some lots. I've got a bunch of really cool ones that I'm going to do individually as well. We'll see what we get from them, but I want to move these out because you know what? It's time to go looking for new postcards. I love to get new ones in. Uh, they can sell really well. You can ship them in a little thing. You can do media mail if you need the tracking. For cards under about $20, I'll just put a forever stamp on those puppies and I almost never have any problems. Here are a couple of vases or vases uh, that I purchased recently at a local thrift store. Uh, not on the same day, but at the same place. They're different hats, as you can see, uh, but they are, I believe, manufactured by the same company. And the reason is the top of them looks pretty similar in the uh, in the shape and in the depth of the fan and out here at the at the top. They have sort of the same width roughly at the top, narrow all the way down to about the same bottom. And then unlike a lot of other uh, vases or art glass pieces where the pontil would be down here on the very bottom, rough, and you would feel it down in here, instead where the glass was attached and broken off is actually on the rim. And you can see it's very rough. You can feel it. I can... You can hear that with my nail scratching on it. It's all the way around the side, and it's the same way with this one. This one's one I bought yesterday, and I only paid $2 for it, which is awesome. I paid $8 for the green one, and that's fine. It'll probably bring more money because of the color. Uh, and I'm going to use something like emerald green or something to kind of grab people's attention in the title. But these vases uh, are called swung vases. And I'm told that the reason for that is that whenever it's attached to uh, whatever the, I don't know what the piece is called that, that is, is holding on to it. But when the glass is blown and it's being created and they're, and they're extending it out or they're blowing it out, they end up shaking it. <laughs> they, or they swing it, I guess you would say. And so after they swing it, it has been swung. And so it's uh, it's a swung vase. It was a vase. It was a vase that was swung apparently, um, and uh, that just has to do with the man the way that they produce these um, swung vases. I don't know how long that they have been collectible. Maybe for a long time, but uh, they are a collectible item. Uh, and so when it comes to, to vases or vases, you should keep a lookout for these. Uh, clearly, I'm, I'm showing you that you can find them in places for uh, cheap prices. And each of these, I think on the low end, 20 or $30, but maybe up more than that. And there are certain brands, one I come across that brings great values is a brand called L.E. Smith. L.E. Smith, if you look up L.E. Smith Swung Vase, you'll know what I'm talking about in eBay. I have not done the deep dive yet to 
to learn how to determine one is made by that manufacturer versus another one. I don't believe that these two are uh, because of this round base, this round flat vase, uh, uh, base rather at the bottom of them. I think that this is something else probably made or produced to look like that. And that's how a lot of costume jewelry is made as well. They're not coming up necessarily with all of their own designs. A lot of times they may be taking a popular design that was made in fine jewelry that incorporated precious gemstones and precious metals like gold and silver, and then they are making something similar to it, but they're using less precious materials, basic metal alloys, rhinestones, or plastics or glass. And so this is no different. Um, you know, people are saying, hey, this is people like this. Let's find a cheaper um, way to produce this. With, it is still durable, but with less valuable items. And we can sell it. We can still make money, but we can sell it for a lot less. And we can uh, we can have more uh, market share because people uh, a lot of people aren't willing to spend or wanting to spend that kind of money. And so anyhow, keep a lookout for these swung vases. I think that they're pretty cool. You can find all kinds that are sort of different shapes, but the general idea is at the top, they kind of they kind of splay out like that and they usually have almost like little round uh, spots like this at the top where they kind of come out almost like fingers. Some can be quite prominent and long. Others are a little bit shorter like this. This past week when I was going through some boxes in the antique store buyout that we had, I'm still going through boxes. I don't even know what are in them out of our storage units. And uh, <clears throat> I came across a very large trunk. It was like a travel trunk that sits uh, vertically, but you can open it up and it actually has space drawers and it has space where you can hang clothing and stuff in it. But anyways, in the drawers, as I opened it up, I noticed that the person I purchased everything from had packed those with items. And this is what I found, <clears throat> a collection of vintage <clears throat> hats. Now, there's definitely a market for some uh, of these things. Sometimes people buy them for costumes. Other times they buy them just to wear. And this, I think, is a really cool example. I like the green color and the contrast of the feathers. I think that these are genuine feathers. Uh, I don't know what what they are, uh, like what type of animal exactly they're from, if it's like a pheasant or what it is. But uh, anyhow, the brand here is Bur Burans, Burans. And what's interesting is I purchased all this stuff from a place in Morganton, Morganton, North Carolina, which is uh, in Western North Carolina where I uh, live. And at one time these were in a store and this one was, was marked at $20. I don't really look at the prices on this because I don't have any idea if that's accurate or not, but it is a cool piece. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do some research on these, but I'm just now pulling them out and I wanted to show you if you know anything about a good resource for where to find like values on vintage um, women's um, like dress hats or even men's, I would be definitely happy to know because uh, otherwise I'm just going to do research like I typically do on eBay and other places. But we have some really nice, this is almost like a velvet uh, kind of color, uh, or I say color, kind of material. Um, we got, and this was kind of like, this was uh, like a, almost like a round, almost like a bowler hat. Again, we got some... Uh, I don't know if that's like rooster tails or what that is on top of there, but it's also, it's an interesting one. This is, it's a hundred percent wool. You can see, and it's got like a, a number there probably indicating the size. Here's another cool one. And these, a lot of these are making me think of like, uh, I don't think that they're from the 1920s. They're probably more like from the forties or fifties. Um, but, uh, I need to look up these. I'm glad these have brands in here. Glenover, 100% wool made in the U.S. When people who I know it, as far as like trucker hats, for example, people like buying ones that say made in the USA. Certain U.S. brands tend to sell pretty darn well. This is a cool one. This is a whew, this is a, this is a serious deal right here. Uh, look at this. It's almost uh, it's it's beautiful and it's uh, really. Um, Man, it's, I bet it would be quite warm uh, and comfortable. But I could see it's definitely a fashion type hat here. Um, you would we would wear, you know, going out to uh, the opera, for example, or to the ball or something like that. And then here's one that's a little out of place. It seems almost like the type of hat that um, someone who would ride a horse uh, would wear, and it's kind of this felt uh, uh, feel on the outside of it. And you can see that it has these leather straps that come off the side that you could snap on like a chin strap to go around to hold it on. And it says cotton Wilker Wilkerson velvet and, uh, Antil, is that what it says? 
Yeah, and teal. Well, so I'm gonna look at this up, but this is a beautiful uh, fabric right here, this kind of blue, like a uh, blue uh, velvet with a leather. This is a functional hat, I believe, for riders, probably riders who um, maybe do sport riding. I, I don't think that this is like a po like a, someone who plays polo, but I don't know, okay? I need to do some research on it, but that's a cool piece. And I imagine uh, it, since it's in good enough condition, it could be used again. Clearly it's used, but it's in really good con shape. I don't know how old it is. It's got like a little spot here on the top. I don't know if you attach something to the top of that or if it's left as is, but that's pretty cool. And then the last few things here, we've got... Uh, Betmar is another, another hat. Ooh, look at this. Mystere. It's imported fur, it says. And then a few, uh, men's hats here. This is kind of a cool hat. You've probably seen ones like this out at thrift stores or things before. Um, again, got some feathers in there. Ooh, I like the inside. What do we got here? Uh, it's got a little bit of a... It's got, it's got a, a bit of a, oh, maybe that's just the padding around it. I was hoping that I saw a label. There's probably a label in here somewhere. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, it's giving me the style and the number, but I'm not seeing a brand. But it's kind of it's kind of cool. Maybe there's more in there. All eh, That might be it. Well, seven. It's just the size. If you have a size seven head, this would fit you, I believe. Um, and then some other hats that kind of look like what, uh, from the haberdashery, what golfers you know, would, would wear back in, back in the day, maybe even still, uh, some cool uh, hats here. And, uh, you know, I could sell these individually. I could throw them up in a lot, uh, real cool. So uh, antique hats, you know, vintage hats. Uh, there's definitely a market for this stuff, folks, both for trucker hats and, uh, things like, uh, snapback hats, but also for these fashion dress hats. And I need to familiarize myself. I don't know if it's going to be a certain time period or it's going to be a certain uh, brand that will bring the most money. And if you have any advice for me, please let me know uh, where I should look to find values on this stuff. Folks, it is time now to start pulling out your Halloween stuff because it is mid-September and the thrift stores are starting to get it. And, uh, and so what I do uh, for certain holidays like Christmas and, uh, and, and Halloween especially is throughout the year when I find things for good prices, I buy them, but I don't throw them up immediately. Now I've had, uh, viewers on here before, uh, disagree with me and that is totally fine. I'm not saying that this is the only way or even the right way, but for me, I tend to get the best values for certain holiday items. If I wait till right before that holiday is going to happen. If I were to try to sell one of these things individually in January, I would not get the same price as if I, if I put it out in September or October. And so if, since these things, most of these things are $3 or less, it's not hard for me to float uh, that, that uh, investment. It's not hard for me to hold on to this for several months so that I can maximize my profit later. Now, if I had spent a grand or two grand on something, no, I need to I need to sell that quickly and get that money back in house. But stuff like this, I would rather hold on to it and then I can maximize what I get. So over here, most interesting thing is this, uh, it's a painting. It's these little ghosties, little goblins or whatever they are, ghosts, witches possibly, uh, hanging out in trees. All right, but it's a painting. It looks like it is a, um, uh, I believe that it's probably like a, uh, like a, uh, not watercolor, but uh, an acrylic paint. You can see these holes here. It's because this has been painted on a piece of slate. It's like stone. It's heavy. Uh, so very interesting painting, uh, uh, kind of a folk arty thing. Someone's going to be interested in having that or hanging that up over Halloween. And then all these other items. So we got this. This could hold a little, it did hold a candle at one time. It's still in there. The goopiness. It's a little skull with a spider on it. We got this thing as well. It will also hold a little holder in there with spider webs for a candle. It's like a little lantern thing that you could, uh, you know, put out. Here's like a little candy dish. It's got a, you know, it's like ceramic and it's painted. It's got a, a witch there with a, with a pumpkin. Ooh, a snow globe for Halloween. That's cool. And here's the coolest part. It's not like Christmas. It'd be like snowflakes. For this one, it's little, it's little bats. It's little bats and it's a, you know, it's a, it's like a witch with some, a ghost and a black cat and stuff. That's cool. That's cool. Snow globes are kind of neat. 
Here's a little basket, a uh, pumpkin basket, a wire basket for trick-or-treating. Here's another thing that can hold a candle or, or something uh, with a witch. It's painted again. And then we got some other things. These are like vintage pieces of plastic that uh, light up if you put a battery in them. Here's just a tiny little plastic thing. Some of these are not terribly valuable in of themselves. But folks, if I were to put these up in a, a, a lot... Right, sell these all together. I could maybe make a hundred, two hundred dollars out of this stuff. This is plastic. It's like a, it's a mask, a pumpkin mask. It's vintage. Um, here is a little thing you would put on in, in like maybe a cake or a treat or something. It's like a witch head, and you stick her down in. Um, what else we got here? This is like a stuffed, uh, a jack o' lantern, uh, little guy here. Here's an interesting piece here. Uh, she's uh, she's set up. You know, old skulls and everything on it and it's a vintage thing and it's got the original hang tag on it which is also cool sugar loaf classics toys it's almost got a mask like a venetian type of a mask like a masquerade ball mask but it's uh, clearly made to be like a halloween thing here is a semi-used vintage uh, a candle of a, of a pumpkin with a big old a jack-o-lantern with a big old tooth sticking out there silly little guy Here's a little hanger that would go on a door handle, like maybe for, for you know, putting it out on the, your front door. Kind of a goofy looking jack-o'-lantern with yellow teeth. Very uh, vintage. A little bit of um, some uh, spotting there on the, because uh, that looks like it's made of like cotton or linen, something like that. And what do we got here? Here's another, here's something that you can hang up, uh, like a streamer type thing. Little jack-o'-lantern with little tassels. I'll drape that over here. Oh, we got us. We got an alien, folks. Kind of made look like the scream mask, but it's not. It's an alien. A little mask for uh, trick or treating. Here's a little. Uh, it's a safety necklace for my for kids. It's vintage. It's it's uh, original in the package. You put a little, uh, you know, battery in that, and you can wear it over your neck so that when you're walking out on the street, no cars uh, will come close to you. They'll know you're there, which is nice. Um, and then a few last things. We got this little, uh, this little vinyl-looking type uh, black cat trick or treat vintage bag. This I think came out of off of a Mickey Mouse character actually from from something. But it's 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 by itself. It's loose. I kept it in here because it's Halloween type themed. Here's a little hanger thing. Uh, I don't know if it's made to be an ornament or what, but it's got a little bit of a moving jaw here. Um, Here's some vintage Halloween leaf bags made out of, uh, of plastic. They look like these little uh, like bags uh, you can put leaves in for the fall. Oh, here's one more of those little plastic things. Um, and then the uh, last few things here are some, these are reprints, reproductions of original uh, black and white uh, Halloween themed uh, postcards. And then here are some that um, are uh, here's a couple more you see. Actually, yeah, they're kind of dressed up like for Halloween. And then these are reproductions. They're not the originals, but Ellen Clapp saddle postcards. But, you know, they're repros, and that's okay. But someone might like it in a lot like this. And then here's some cool p old paper bags from like the 1980s uh, that weren't used. Um, and, uh, and they're still in the back here. Oh, I see they weren't used. A couple of them look like they've been pulled out, but most of them are still in there. And then, of course, some jewelry. Throughout the year, folks, when I buy different lots of costume jewelry, or even if I see individual pieces that I think would sell, I hold them back for this time. And so these all came from different places all across the, the, the year, different spots, or in lots of jewelry. And I held out the stuff that was Halloween themed specifically for this purpose. And so what I'll do, I could sell these individually, but I'll probably list it as a lot. We got some bracelets over here that have skulls on them. We've got uh, pendants for necklaces, brooches. These are all incorporating things like witches, uh, skulls, jack-o'-lanterns, black cats, spiders and spider webs, uh, things like that. Trick or treat. We got some cool uh, looking figures here. We got a, a charm bracelet and uh, and brooches and a lot. And so somebody's gonna like this. They can they can wear this stuff um, as the kids coming for for trick or treating and stuff. Or maybe they just collect Halloween things. Some cool pieces here. Um, excited to have it. And this is just how, how I do it because I find that I can make more money from doing it within about 30 to 45 days before the Halloween, uh, before whichever holiday it is, is going to happen. 
All right, that's a lot of stuff, but let's take a pause real quick because old Rusty's got to head over to someone's home. They uh, are needing to clean out this estate and they've got a large workshop full of tools that they need to offload and I'm gonna help them with that. So let's see what I might be getting into now. All right, folks, this is the very first load of stuff that I got from this workshop. Um, man alive, it was so many tools and uh, sets of things in here. You can even see inside the cab. Uh, I still got stuff in here and this is just load number one. I didn't get any of the larger equipment, the equipment that was like bolted down onto workbenches and stuff. There's like a drill, a drill press. There's uh, um, a chop saw. There's a, a, uh, uh, band saw, various other things. I'm excited to get through here and see what stuff there is. A lot of vintage stuff, a lot of uh, uh, electric tools, but a lot of those are corded and then tons of just like jigs and various uh, things, clamps, and I mean just stuff. I don't even know what's in here, folks. I'm going to have to go through and research uh, just exactly what all of these are. But... Um, exciting tools sell well generally for us and so uh, hopefully we can get into this and uh maybe we could even do a whole video uh sometime in the near future on just the tools um this was an awesome opportunity because i'm helping someone out who's cleaning out an estate of a deceased relative they need to sell the home and uh instead of me purchasing all this we've just worked out an agreement where i'm helping solve the problem to get it out of the way so that they can get that property ready to sell and we're just going to split uh the profit on the sale of things um and so sometimes I do that other times, you know, it's easier if I just buy things out because people get the money that they want and then I can, I can sell over the time that makes sense for me. But, uh, she didn't seem to have an issue with the timing of stuff. So I'm going to try to, uh, of course I'm going to, it's, it's a, it's a game, right? Try to sell it for the most money you can in the quickest amount of time. Um, sometimes you can sell things fast. Other times, uh, you got to wait, but anyhow, uh, we'll get into this soon and, uh, I mean, there's got to be a treasure in here somewhere, am I right? Well, I've pulled all this stuff in here, as you can see, from the little pickup truck I used out of the fleet. Here's an interesting tool. Not exactly sure what it is. It's got these cool handles on it, this scoop type thing. And at the end, at first when I saw it, I thought maybe it had been um, damaged. But upon further inspection, let me switch her over here. Upon further inspection, I think it's made this way. It's made to turn and twist. And so now I believe that this is some sort of auger type uh, or digging tool that you would put down on the ground. You would hold onto this and you would twist it and it helps you cut a little hole down on the ground. Really nifty thing. It's definitely a, a vintage uh, tool here. It's an, an antique tool. Um, I'm gonna put this in here for just the time being, but you can see we've got some really awesome old look at how long this is this is probably if i were to lay down this is probably a six foot long blade it's rusted but the teeth are in great condition and you can see if we could clean off this sawdust here there's actually uh, uh words here probably the maker manufacturer it might also be on the blade someplace but uh, that's cool and then we've got another uh blade uh, another saw right here it's a hand, you know, you got a nice hand there. Look at these huge teeth. And then it terminates out here with another handle right here. These are the kinds of things that you would use to for logging, to cut down trees, folks, and stuff. Really cool. Um, got some really neat stuff in here. Here's a nice little Craftsman uh, Chrome Edge, it says, uh, hand saw. This right here is a clamp of some kind, and you can see how long it is it goes all the way down there it's a very long clamp um various tools in their cases as you can see we've got some nice brands craftsman stanley and um dewalt we got some really old toolboxes here full of stuff oh ross perot for president well he didn't win folks but uh some people voted for him for sure um and then various other things we've got this is a dewalt sander we've got looks like a makita uh circular saw there we've got a, a sander down in there uh various 
things. I'm so excited to get in here. Really cool old hammers and tools. We've got little hatchets and stuff. We've got chisels, wood handled chisels. Really a bunch of clamps, some really large uh, C clamps. Cincinnati Tool Company. Hargrave. Hargrave, made in the United States. Um, but I mean, I have not really gotten into this. It was really getting it into the warehouse so that we can start, um, looking through stuff. But this is a bit of a teaser folks for a coming video. Uh, but here's the last, uh, uh, thing kind of like to, to whet your appetite, to whet your appetite, uh, for next time is this puppy right here. Mmm. This right here folks is none other than the Stanley number 55 hand planer and you can see the wood is in great condition it's definitely used but the handle that i'm holding on to as well as these on the side are are sturdy they're not cracked um and they are uh they're in really good shape somebody who wanted to refinish this could make it look beautiful it's definitely used got a little bit of rust and tarnish on it but it has a, as you can see right here the original little card that says stanley flame 55 i'm going to move that out of the way so i don't put it right on there i don't believe that this is a 1989 version although we have the booklet here for the combination planes of the 45 and the 55, and this is instructional guides. But if you, and this is from 89, I think that this is just a, to, 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 to have a directive on how to uh, maybe repair, or put things together. But if you look, this is from 1870, was when this particular model was first made, and it shows you all the different variations over time. Now, I don't, I haven't done any research on this yet, I don't know. But here's the kicker, folks, down here, if you pull out this drawer, we have not one, but two, three, four, and five boxes of the original cutters. So if I, if I, if I push this, you'll see, look at all of the different shapes and sizes of cutters. And every one of these five is full of blades. He, 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 he this person, loved this cared about it was important to him look at all of these blades in here now if you were to look up number 55 uh plane you will find that with all of the blades intact uh, i think i feel like over two thousand dollars someone sold a lot of a bunch of blades just the blades uh but then there are there are several where in the several hundreds into the over thousand dollars that people have sold this particular plane with instructions and the the uh, uh, matching blades there's even other blades here on the side that don't come in a box and then some sort of other apparatus here uh that may uh, go on it or can go on it um, little clamp piece here. Uh, really a cool thing in this awesome box. And so, uh, maybe this is from 89. Maybe it was just used a bunch, but even, even so, uh, these are, are not easy to come by. Um, I really think I'm going to make some good money on just this one item for this lady. This could potentially sell for a thousand dollars by itself. And you know what folks, I hope it does. I want to help this lady out. And, um, you know, uh, that'll just be a fun, it was just a fun thing to find. I'm excited. Um, please tune in soon when I start going through all this. Well, that's it for today, folks. Uh, I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned a couple of things. Uh, we're going through all kinds of stuff all the time. I've got another trip over there to, uh, to get a variety of other tools that are large pieces, uh, large tools like bandsaws and drill presses and dovetail like joiners and, and various uh, 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 pieces of equipment, which I'm going to try to sell locally. But um, stay tuned. Good luck on your hunts. I hope you find some awesome treasures. Uh, be kind to those people out there. Develop relationships. That's always worked the best for me. Be safe and take care. We'll see you next time. Be -do -bo -bo -bo. Let's go make some money. Rusty, rusty, rusty hair.